David Miranda probably never thought he'd be the center of an increasingly high-stakes international political intelligence and media battle over the world's most closely held secrets. But he now finds himself in precisely that position. Miranda is a Brazilian national, a partner of Guardian's Glenn Greenwald, the man who has been writing blockbuster stories based on Edward Snowden's leaked NSA documents. This past Sunday, Miranda was detained by UK authorities in Heathrow Airport while returning from a trip to Berlin, where he had met up with Greenwald's journalistic collaborator, the filmmaker Laura Poitras. Miranda had his laptop confiscated by the authorities, along with an additional hard drive, two memory sticks, a mobile phone, a smartwatch, and a video game console. He was held and interrogated for nine hours under Schedule 7 of a British anti-terrorism law called the Terrorism Act of 2000, asked about his association with Greenwald and The Guardian's reporting. Miranda's lawyers are threatening legal action over what they and others are calling his, quote, unlawful detention. The British government defended its decision to detain Miranda in a statement today, saying in part that it was their right to stop anyone suspected of carrying, quote, highly sensitive stolen information that would help terrorism. When U.S. officials were asked about the incident, they said they got a heads up. The London police were going to detain Miranda, but insisted they had nothing to do with it, saying this was a decision that was made by the British government without the involvement and not the request of the United States government. In response to Glenn Greenwald's partner being detained, the editor of The Guardian, Alan Rusbridger, recounted yesterday a series of absolutely jaw-dropping, top-secret conversations with the highest level of U.K. intelligence officials. The gist of these talks being, hand over the Snowden material, the hard drives the agency believed contained leaked files, or destroy it or we will stop you from publishing it. U.K. officials going on to say things ominous like, you've had your fun, now we want the stuff back. And you've had your debate. There's no need to write any more. What you are looking at is a MacBook from The Guardian that held information from Edward Snowden that was one of several hard drives smashed to bits at the behest of the U.K. government. Joining me now is Alan Rusbridger, editor-in-chief of The Guardian newspaper. Alan, you write in the piece in The Guardian about being contacted by a representative of the U.K. government who claimed to speak for the prime minister over two months ago. And I wondered, was this before The Guardian had published any of the Edward Snowden documents? No, we had published some of the documents. Uh, so this was, this was um, I guess, some, some weeks into our... Uh, Uh, handling of this material. Had you had any conversations with the UK government prior to publishing? I know in some similar situations in the US in regards to the NSA and WikiLeaks, the New York Times had extended negotiations with the Bush administration. Had you had any interface with the UK government before you published the first Snowden document? We, we have been putting uh, matters to both the U.S. and the U.K. governments and allowing them time to respond and make representations uh, before most of the stories that we've published. Were you surprised by what you refer to as the steely tone and the increasing escalation of what can only be interpreted of, as threats from the U.K. government over publishing what you were publishing? Well, to begin with, the, the discussions were cordial uh, and uh, didn't feel threatening. But there came a point uh, about um, just over a month ago where the tone changed and there was an explicit threat to use the law if we didn't either uh, return the uh, material that we had or destroy it. And so how did you respond to that? Well, it, it may be difficult for uh, American viewers to uh, understand the British context, um, uh, and this is partly why I published this piece yesterday. Uh, so you've got a context in which there is no First Amendment in the UK, and there's no bar against prior restraint, the, the restraining uh, of newspapers or news organizations to stop them publishing material in advance of publication. So uh, in a world in which uh, I explained to the British government that we had this material already in America and Glenn Greenwald has it in Brazil, it seemed to me to misunderstand the nature of digital communications to be destroying a hard disk in London. Uh, But as they were adamant that they would go to law, uh, I thought it was simpler to get on with the reporting from America uh, and uh, destroy the copy that we had in London. Which means agents from the UK government came to the Guardian's offices 
with what sledgehammers with with uh, <laughs> I mean I, I mean honestly how did it like physically how did it go down there was a hard drive on a floor and you watched as agents of the government battered the thing well it, this might seem a, a, a nice distinction but I was uh, I was not going to hand these this material to the government in any way uh, so I said we would destroy it, but if they wanted to supervise the destruction, then they could. So they sent along two technicians from GCHQ, that's the equivalent of the NSA, uh, and they uh, advised on what you had to do in order to destroy a uh, machine uh, so that it is of no use uh, to anybody else and nothing could be retrieved from it, which is a bit more complicated than uh, I had imagined. So. A Guardian employee went through the process of smashing to bits, burning beyond recognition, whatever it is, while two agents of essentially the UK's version of the NSA watched over and made sure the process was being done. All the while, a copy clearly of these files exists, I don't know where, in Brazil, the US, somewhere, and you are uh, redoubling your efforts. You are, intend to publish, to continue publishing stories from this trove of documents. Well, that to me has been the overriding priority, that there is material there which I think deserves to be aired uh, and which is of some public importance. Uh, and that's why I didn't want to get caught into a situation in which effectively a judge would have control of the Snowden material. Are you going to find uh, yourself... Would be some are you going to find yourself before a judge? Are you going to find yourself um, brought before a court, uh, indicted in some form, if you continue to do this? Do you have any fear about that? Well, I don't, I don't believe that that will happen. And if you listen to uh, Attorney General Holder, he's made it explicit that he doesn't intend to prosecute journalists for doing their journalistic business in the United States. So I believe the protections around the First Amendment and the absence of uh, prior restraint in, in America are uh, as high as anywhere in the world. Uh, and uh, I don't believe that journalists are going to be at risk for doing journalism uh, in, in the States. Alan Rusbridger from The Guardian, thank you for your time.